Mr. President, I ask unanimous consent that the quorum call be lifted. Without objection. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I want to start today by thanking Senator Collins once again for her partnership in putting together the package that we are now considering. I'm very pleased she was able to join me on the floor yesterday as we both spoke about the effort that has gone into getting this bill off the ground. So at risk of repeating myself, I'd like to speak again about how we crafted the bills before us and urge all of my colleagues to join us to debate and advance this package. Today we are doing something that many senators have been calling for for quite some time something Senator Collins and I have been hearing about from our colleagues since the moment we took over the leadership of the Appropriations Committee. We are keeping our foot on the gas as we continue returning the appropriations process to regular order for the first time in years. Last night, we began the process to allow the Senate to consider a legislative package of three strongly bipartisan funding bills. And let me just say this again, getting to this point was no easy feat. And I'm grateful to my partner on the Appropriations Committee, Vice Chair Collins, for working with me to make this happen. And to all of our members, especially the subcommittee chairs who worked on the bills in the package before us today. Senator Collins and I knew from the start, if we wanted this to work, we had to write serious bipartisan funding bills that can actually be signed into law. As I said yesterday, that meant a few things. First of all, we are going to have to abide by the top line numbers that were set in the debt limit deal. And I've considered my personal concerns about that limit before. And they have meant some tough choices because that was agreed on by the House and the Senate for all of us in these bills. But President Biden and Speaker McCarthy shook hands. They shook hands and we passed this deal in, a Congre in Congress in a bipartisan way. So the reality is we can't produce serious bills if we start by throwing that bipartisan framework out the window. So we didn't do that. We worked within the framework and I pushed at every stage of the process with my colleagues to make sure we produced the strongest possible bills under those circumstances. Because we simply have to move forward, not back. Secondly, we understood we were going to have to work together. Greetings, friends. Action must be taken. The United States is seeing a big increase in poverty due to the high costs of living. Many lawmakers, including President Biden, are now looking for other ways to provide inflation relief to the American people. There are eligible households that can claim a rebate worth up to $675 right now. My dearest friends, I will be going over all of the new details, so please make sure that you watch until the end of this video. Also friends, if you would like to enter the weekly Walmart gift card giveaways, all you have to do is click in like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you comment on my dearest friends, the greater your chances of winning the giveaways. And please make sure that you do stay tuned because I'll be announcing the winners of yesterday's Walmart gift card giveaway. Democratic Senator Joe Manchin and Congressional Republicans are facing renewed criticism following the release of new data by the U.S. Census Bureau this week. The new data revealed that the child poverty rate in the nation more than doubled in 2022 compared to the previous year. This dramatic increase is largely attributed to the expiration of the enhanced child tax credit. The expanded credit, which was part of the American Rescue Plan, provided eligible families with up to $300 per month for each child and eliminated the regressive phase-in of the original credit. In 2021, this policy played a crucial role in reducing the U.S. child poverty rate to a historic low of 5.2%. However, the program came to an end at the close of the year due to opposition from Senator Joe Manchin, who had initially supported the American Rescue Plan. He unfoundedly claimed that some parents might misuse the money instead of using it for their children. Survey data, on the other hand, showed that the majority of families use the funds to purchase essential items 
such as groceries, and cover rent expenses. In addition to Senator Manchin's opposition, congressional Republicans who unanimously opposed the American Rescue Plan also refused to support an extension of the enhanced child tax credit. This extension was part of a broader crisis era safety net that is currently unraveling. As anticipated, the expiration of the program led to a distressing surge in childhood poverty. According to the latest Census Bureau data, the child poverty rate surged to 12.4% in 2022, marking the largest single year increase on record. The overall U.S. poverty rate also saw a substantial increase, rising from 7.8% in 2021 to 12.4% in the following year. The Census Bureau reported that more than 37 million Americans lived in poverty in 2022. Sharon Perot, president of the Center on Budget and Policy Priorities, said this shocking increase in poverty. Can be directly attributed to policy decisions, including Congress's failure to extend the successful child tax credit expansion. Policymakers should take action to expand the child tax credit this year, and reverse this troubling trend. Perot also noted that if Congress had maintained the expanded child tax credit, an additional three million children would have been spared from poverty. Preventing over half of the 5.2 million increase in the number of children in poverty last year, this would have resulted in a child poverty rate of approximately 8.4 percent, significantly lower than the actual 12.4 percent rate. So, in response to the new data, President Biden placed the blame for the child poverty increase entirely on Republican lawmakers, not mentioning that Senator Manchin's opposition. Was ultimately decisive in the evenly divided Senate in 2021. Senate Democrat John Fetterman said in a recent statement that the new census data is just completely heartbreaking and deeply disappointing. Montana residents have a 16-day window remaining to submit their applications for a property tax refund, with the potential to receive up to $675 per taxpayer. Residents of the Treasure State. Can access the property tax rebate program until October first, twenty twenty-three, through an online portal established by the state, or by using a paper application form to be eligible for the property tax rebate program. Montana taxpayers must have owned and resided in a home within the state for a minimum of seven months. Additionally, they must have received and paid property taxes. For the residents during the 2022 tax year, in order to qualify for the rebate, under this rebate program, taxpayers will be entitled to a refund, matching the sum they paid in property taxes for their primary Montana residence. There is a maximum cap of $675 for the rebate payment, and the state of Montana specifies that each property. Qualifies for a single tax rebate. Well, my magnificent and most marvelous friends, that is the end of my daily stimulus update video for today. Thank you so much, friends, for being part of this community. The two winners of yesterday's Walmart gift card giveaway is Teresa Davis and Juanita Cosio. Congratulations, my dearest friends! To claim your gift cards, please check your notifications page and send me a message, or you can message me on my Facebook page. Thank you, dear friends, and have a wonderful and very blessed weekend.